What's up, guys? This is Matt with From Ashes to New, and you're watching Ambi. Hey, everyone. It's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with From Ashes to New. I'm Hello. Matt. Hi, I'm Matt. How are you doing, Matt? I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. I just want to say welcome to Ambi. Welcome to Oshawa. How is this tour treating you so far? Well, we just did Warp Tour before this tour, and we took like a three-week break before we came to Canada. It's our first time touring Canada, too, so it's our first time in Canada, but it is relaxing. This tour is like, you know, Warp Tour is like 100 degrees every day. You're sweating. You don't have time for hotels, so it's just like on the road. Here, it's like sweets and just hanging out and chilling, so it's... uh. <laughs> It's nice. It's a slice of heaven. And ha you mentioned that you haven't toured through Canada before, but have you been here prior, or is this your when first time? When I was time? like seven, I okay. think I was like Niagara Falls. Okay. So. I was on the Canadian side though, so that counts. I, I'm hearing. <laughs> a lot of people say the better side. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. We are now touring in support of your latest record release, Day One. Now, when I listen to this album, it's very cool because there's so many different nuances. So I have to ask: Is your one rule when recording to kind of have no rules? Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's how we approach every situation when we write a song. It's, we don't think about writing a song. We just go in and do whatever feels natural. And if it comes out the way that it comes out, then, you know, that's, what's for, that's what From Ashes to New is. So, um, you know, we don't, like, stockpile songs either. We don't just, like, write a bunch of songs and then pick from them. Like, everything that has been released has been the only thing that we've written. Oh. So if we don't feel good about it, we kind of, we're, like, 30 seconds in. We're like, meh, <laughs> next try or <laughs> next day, next you, know, you know, just... You know, if you're in that position where you're kind of like feeling a writer's block, don't force it. And I think that's what comes out in our music is we all have a bunch of different influences. Our, our, you know, our, our influences are very eclectic. So it comes out in our music. Like you said, there's so many different nuances. There's just so many different things that we listen to that influence us as musicians. I think part of your music lyrically is to just give a positive spin to a couple of bad things that are going on. So how important is it for you to give positivity to all of your listeners? Because I feel like that is such an integral part of your music. You know, in every walk of life, you're going to come across some type of adversity. And it's, it's really easy these days like to just give up and just say, you know, I can't do this. I... I, I quit. And I just someone just tagged me in something on Facebook yesterday that was California is the first state in the United States to have suicide prevention classes in their schools. And it's like, you know, for me when I was in school, it was more like, you know, suck it up and deal with it. And now like it's becoming socially acceptable to have these types of things go through your head and everyone's kind of dealing with it in a different way. And we kind of just want to be you know, a voice that helps guide you in the direction that you should go and stay strong, believe in yourself, don't let other people overcome you and overcome your own adversities. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say our songs are suicide prevention or anything like that, but if that's what it helps you with, then that's, you know, that's a win on our end. If we can do something to help people through our music, then our music is just more than music. It's actually, you know, a story, it's a message, it has purpose. I love that. And it kind of carries on to your single Lost and Alone in the video you shared for that. It mm -hmm. follows a boy and his uh, young life pretty much is trying to find a path and music helps him through that. So mm -hmm. for you, who are those bands that helped you through tough times? Um, man, I don't know. Eminem was huge, you know, because it was like when he came out with his second record, it was like trying. I was in that, that phase of my life where I was trying to find myself. And he had that song, The Way I Am. And that song was just basically like, I don't care what you think about me. I'm going to be me, I'm going to do me. And I took that and I, I listened to it over and over and over again. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this too. And of course, I've struggled with it from that point forward. And I still struggle with it today, you know, trying to find your place in this world. And I think that that lost and alone, you know, I think that, uh, you know, that comes out in our lyrics. But I also want to put it out there that a lot of people will watch our music videos for the first time. Um, well, I don't say a lot, but some people watch our music videos for the first time or they'll hear our songs for the first time. And they'll be like, oh, this emo shit. Like, <laughs> why, why are you... Really? Yeah, the, why, why are you talking about all the sad stuff? And, and our delivery is, is that we talk about the bad things to help you realize that you're not the only person who goes through those bad things. That, and there's a spin, there's a positive message in there that says, hey, you know, just because it's bad doesn't mean it's the end. You know, we've all faced that in our lives, and I think that everyone either A, faced it, B, is going to face it, or C, has faced it down. So... You know, that's a big part of our music. So we're definitely not emo, and we're definitely not preaching about, you know, giving up. It's the exact opposite. 
I, I love that fact because I think that's why you're able to kind of conjure up the fan base that you have because your music is so relatable. Mm -hmm. One thing when it comes to your fans is it's awesome to see your interaction with them, whether it's Twitter, Facebook. I always see your name replying to people. That's just brilliant to see. Yeah. So what's something that a fan has given you kind of in return, whether in physical form, a gift? Uh, I mean, we got a, a guy out in Utah. His name's Jason. And uh, every year he gives me an Eagles jersey. I'm a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. So last year he gave me a DeMarco Murray jersey, and DeMarco Murray got traded after one season. And he hit me up. We were actually out on Warp Tour. We were in Salt Lake, and he's like, hey, man, he's like, sorry about the DeMarco jersey. I'm like, you don't have to apologize. You know, Chip Kelly did that. Um, <laughs> but um, he's like, hey, you want another jersey? So he got me a Carson Wentz jersey. So, um, But it's, you know, we get junk food a lot. So okay. we have gym memberships. Uh, <laughs> we work out as much as we can because we have to supplement all the cookies and, you know, um, brownies and all the stuff that we get. But um, I think the thing that means the most to me, and I can probably speak for the rest of the guys in the band, is when people message us or tell us, hey, your song has helped me in this way. Your song has done this for me. And, um, you know, I just want to have that. You know, like we're saying in this conversation, like I just want to have – that is the most rewarding thing to us. And uh, I think that people have lost that in music these days. Like, you know, you listen to music and it's kind of like, yeah, we're partying, we're throwing down. It's cool. Like, we party, we throw down too. Don't get me wrong. But uh, we want to have something for the people more than like, hey, go get drunk and yeah. make bad decisions. So, so go get drunk and make good decisions. <laughs> well, I just wanted to do a little quick fire round with you. Okay. All right. So the first one is, where would you love to perform and take your music that you have yet to? Australia. Who was your favorite artist when you were a kid? Eminem. What was the first show you went to? Oh, wow. So I was three, and I went to Carmen. And that probably doesn't make any... People were like, Carmen, the pop singer, was around when you were three? No. <laughs> it was... Uh, do you know who Carmen is? Yeah, Carmen was a Christian contemporary singer, and I grew up in a Christian household. And uh, when I was three, my parents took me to see him. What's a must-have on your tour rider? I just told Royce this. I need some Monster Ultra White. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving me the green. I need the white. Too much sugar. And for the last one, what's your favorite thing to snack on while on the road? To do what? To snack on. Oh, I thought you said smack on a wall. <laughs> I'm like, you saw that Instagram. Or, yeah. um, to snack on while on the road. Oh, man, I'm a sucker for Reese's peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. Like, anything that has Reese's peanut butter, the crispy, crunchy bars, they don't sell them everywhere, but they're like a Fifth Avenue, just like on steroids. They're amazing. <laughs> well, just to wrap everything up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone knows that we thank you for the support, and... You know, like you said, I'm very active on social media. I'm very active in responding to our fans and talking to our fans. And, uh, you know, just thanks for everything you're doing. Like I say on stage every night, there's a lot of people in this world and in this industry that didn't believe that rap rock could still exist, didn't believe that you could still mix the two genres together. But our fans are showing the world that that is not true. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing. We'll keep mixing rap and rock together. And uh, we'll keep sitting down with chicks like this one right here and talking to you. <laughs> awesome. I want to say thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. See you next time.